What is up guys? Welcome to a new series I'm checking out. My name is Evil One and this is Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. This is a surface warfare mostly. I think there's submarines in there. But uh, it starts the time period like around 1890 and goes to about 1950. Disclaimer time, I am not a naval historian by any stretch of the imagination. So, uh, But I do really enjoy these big battleships. These classic style uh, destroyers, uh, that sort of thing, cruisers. And so we're going to be going through the campaign. But before we do that, let's take a look at the settings we have set here. Uh, we'll go under general. Let's see, we got uh, armor quality and penetration data. That's all the way down. I'm not even sure what that means. We are set to inch because I am an American. And of course, we're in English. Controls, nothing special here. Graphics, set the ultra. Um, yeah, pretty much everything set as high as it can go. Uh, we do have an FPS limit on at 60. That's set by default. And if you can see right up here in the corner of the screen, it is right at 60. Uh, I haven't run into any issues with this yet. We have the music volume turned all the way down. When we first start the game, there is a warning saying that you will get a copyright strike if we use the in-game sound uh, music. So I have been playing this for a little bit. As you can see here, the Naval Academy, I have done uh, all of these uh, missions here. It says that there's 60-something of them, but a lot of these are just question, uh, uh, question marks, so you have to unlock them. And, you know, these are taking uh, a long time. When I first did this first one up here, it was like drinking from a fire hose. Like there is so much to this game, and we'll we'll get into it. But I feel confident at this level, and with the uh, other YouTube videos I've watched in the last couple of days, that I can uh, start the uh, campaign. So it says continue campaign, but I really haven't started one yet. So we're gonna go. See if we go new campaign. They're all empty. We're gonna go new campaign, and now we get to select our empire or our nation. And because this is my first playthrough and I am an American, I'm going to start as the United States. The United States of America has gradually become a mighty industrial power, which can now counter the traditional superpowers of the world. The U.S. fleet is currently in development, but can quickly become dominant due to the increasing financial growth of the U.S. nation. Moreover, the relatively secured ground borders allow a non-risky expansion policy. The recent collapse of the Spanish Empire in Latin America provides many opportunities to gain control of these territories in political or military manner. The United States should not be troubled about a potential war with the decadent Spain, but must be wary of the increasing rivalry of, amongst, amongst the great powers and choose wisely its friends and enemies. So we are going to start in 1890. We are going to keep the difficulty at normal for now. I think we can go hard, legendary... And, and normally I would set the a little bit higher. But for my first playthrough, let's just keep it at normal. Uh, the AI has a slight income bonus at higher difficulties than normal. I think it's pretty balanced from what I hear on, on YouTube. The AI opponent is historical. The fleet is auto-generated. We're going to switch that to create own. And we're going to turn AI shared designs off. Okay, so... We're going to go ahead and start the campaign. And we'll start campaign. Okay, so this initial loading screen took forever. I just now went to click to continue. And I'm going to say it took probably three or four minutes, which is unusual from what I've seen so far in this game. So we're going to go ahead and click. All right, fleet creation. Go to the ship design tab to design ships and build them. The ship design can be managed in the fleet tab. Okay. So this looks like a whole lot of information, and it is. Uh, basically, we are the United States, and these are like our regions uh, of the world that we can see here. We can move around. And now, and as I understand it, the campaign doesn't follow history exactly. Like, the era is about the same, but like, we could be at war with the UK, you know, almost starting out. They can, they can hate us right away. Uh, or... You know, things of that nature. It doesn't follow history to the letter as far as, like, the relationships between the countries go. So, this is our world map. We can zoom in. We can zoom out. 
Uh, we can start campaign. Up up here we got these tabs. And let's take a look at politics really quick. We'll just go down the line. So here's the British Empire, for example. Uh, all their their information. This is what their current fleet consists of. Eight battleships, 12 heavy cruisers, 17 light cruisers, and 17 torpedo boats. They have 16 building. And that's about it. They are pretty wealthy, as we can see. And they, here's the important part right here. They're pretty happy with us. They're really happy with France. Not so happy. Fairly happy and kind of neutral. Not so happy. Happy with Japan and neutral with those countries. China and I'm not even sure what the country that is yet. Uh, so if we look at some of these other countries, that's, that's, oh, like this one right here. The Chinese Empire and Japan are about to go to war. Apparently when this goes to negative 100, it's wartime. And you can improve relations and, and increase tension. Apparently these may or may not work uh, as designed. It could backfire. You can try and improve your relations and you go to, go to war with somebody. So let's go down to us. Here we are in the United States. And we're going to see a lot more of this information here pretty soon. Uh, we're pretty happy across the board with everybody. Except for this country. It was the Spanish Empire. We're going to go to war with Spain, I think. So... Uh, which kind of follows history, I guess, to some degree. All right, so finances. Uh, let's take a look here. Now, I do know that we want to start... Well, let's just start at the top. We have our monthly balance, a little more than $20 million. Uh, Our naval funds, this is how much we get to spend. And this is how many crew we have currently waiting assignment to a ship. Currently, we have no naval ships. We have none active, none being, none being built, anything like that. Our shipyard size, we need to start working on this right away. And the reason why is because we want to go big and it's going to take 24 months and we're going to leave it just maxed for a long time. Because it's going to take a long time to get a shipyard physically big enough to build some of these bigger ships that we want to build. So our annual economic growth is 11%, which is really good. Our GDP is a little bit more than $8 billion. Our Navy budget, we get 4.4% of that, and so that's what we get a month to spend on ships and crew and research and that sort of thing. So to keep this number big, we need transports. We need to have that trade, that economic trade going between the countries that we're friendly with. So we're going to crank that all the way up. And we're going to see a, see this dip if we go to war, and we're going to see these trade losses right here. So we're already spending $5 million in shipyard development, uh, and that's how much we have going out the door right now. Tech budget and crew training. Let's bump crew training up. The better the crew that we have, we'll go about 80% there. The better crew that we have, the more accurate we're going to be, the faster we're going to be, the more efficient our ships will move. So we definitely want to have good crew on board our boats. Now, tech Yep, we're maxing that. We want to be the most technologically advanced Navy on the globe. So that's our finances. Let's take a look at research now. So here we have priorities up here in this corner. And we can assign these little beakers, if you will, to these areas. You can see like this one here is going to take eight months to create a control station. Armor quality is not even registering yet. And if we move one of these things on here, I just, I just, we just click, you see it takes two months. And so we have three of these to spend. And so I'm thinking that our first goal is to increase our engine's output. That should be our number one focus right now. Um, this one's going to take nine months. So let's actually put it, Oh, here we go. I didn't realize that we can click on these and drop this down. That wasn't part of the tutorial thing that I kind of watched. Put that there. That's going to take two months to get better boilers. All right, and hull design. Let's see. We got armor technology, fire control, damage control, Navy guns, projectile technology, torpedo technology, submarine design, and naval tactics. So we can look at some of these two and see, like, this one's eight months but the little slider is almost full. So if we were to click that in there, that would be done in like two months. But torpedo technology isn't really something I want to 
look at early game. We're working on our engines so we can move more weight faster. And I'm thinking that the whole strength uh, should be a priority, along with our naval tactics. If we hover the mouse over it here, we can see that uh, the fleet will be much less effective if we have poor crew, bad command, and no protective means against submarines and minefields. We can significantly improve our strategic strength by investing in the research of naval tactics. And I agree. So let's put one there and we'll get that down to uh, two months there. I put it in this one because this one is going to take a while. And then let's do whole strengthening. We'll just plop that one in there. All right. So those are our priorities for now. Uh, we can change these, obviously. Well, can I make, make that go away? Okay. There we go. Uh, so we're, we're researching new boilers. We're researching the uh, hull strengthening. So we're going to get more efficient engines, better uh, hull design, and better communication for better uh, crew. Okay, so now let's pop over to ship design. And you can see here we have no ships. It's completely blank. So let's click new design. Now this looks really overwhelming and it's actually not once you start seeing the important aspects of this little screen here we can move around we can zoom in and zoom out and we can use the keyboard keys here to kind of move around the the dockyard here so this is our small battleship and it's going to be our first ship that we design it's going to be our flagship for our entire navy so Let's start over here on this side. We can drop down these and see our little overview, but let's keep this one open. We can do crew info, and this one, the ship details, is another one that we take a look at. And I'll kind of scroll through this as we add and subtract things to and from the ship. Okay, so along the bottom, we have our small battleship. These are our hull types, and if we click like main tower, these are our to main tower types, secondary tower. And new ones will be unlocked, and then uh, as older ones become obsolete, they won't be allowed to be placed on board anymore because they're just too old. We're obviously going to start with a, a, a small battleship. And if you look uh, on this little screen that pops up, the max optimal speed is 16.7 knots. So we want to make sure that our speed slider stays under that. I'm going to bring it right up to 16.7 right there. Perfect. That is the best speed for this whole design. So we can also increase the slider, but now we can see our, our shipyard size limit is it's over. It's our, we're oversized. We can't build in the shipyard. So we're actually going to have to keep that down there. And that's why we are researching that so quick. So let's change the name. We're going to do this. That's the USS Evil. I don't know if it's going to add the USS in front of it or not. All right. So bulkheads, we want to keep that all the way up. This is our range. This is pretty important, especially in later game. Our beam, this is how wide the ship is. We can make it really fat, which is, makes for a much better shooting platform, but it also makes it slower and a little bit tougher to turn. Like over here, we can see our turning speed, our turning rate, and our turning circle. And I'm going to come over here. Keep an eye on these numbers right here. And I'm going to come over here, and, and I'm going to lower the beam down. You can see as we get skinnier, it's easier to turn the ship. So we're going to keep the, the beam, well, let's just do like 5% there. We also That also adds a lot of weight. We have to keep an eye on our weight up here and how much this ship costs. We'll, we'll pay attention to these numbers here in just a second. Let's keep going. Draft is how tall the ship is. So we can raise this and lower it as well. We're just going to keep it right there neutral. It kind of does the same thing. It adds a lot of weight if we increase it. Uh, the pitch and roll uh, will decrease if we lower it down. So crews, uh, crew quarters, let's go standard. 
we can go to spacious. Uh, what this does is it protects our crewmen inside. Those are the people that are actually operating the ship. And if they die because of a, a 10 inch round comes smashing through the deck and takes out a birthing area inside the ship and kills everybody, that's, that's really bad. So if we space out our crewmen in here, it might only kill one or two of our crew instead of 20 or 30. It's that kind of line of thinking. Let's take a look at our propulsion. Here we have coal. That's all we get early game. Boilers, we just get a natural boiler, basic steam engine. And here we have our rudder, which is balanced, semi-balanced, and unbalanced. Basically, this is where the rudder sits on the little pedestal. And this affects our turning rate and speed as well. I kind of like to keep it unbalanced. If you hover your mouse over, you can see uh, the stats here. We get a better turning rate if we have it unbalanced, but we get a faster turning rate uh, and we lose a lot less uh, of our turning speed if we go with a balanced rudder. So a battleship is designed to kind of hang out at the fringe of the battle and like shoot in to the other ships and try to keep them at arm's length kind of a thing. I'm going to go with unbalanced. All right, and steam steering. That's all we get for now. Iron plate. We can increase the quality of our armor, but that's going to add a lot of weight, and it's going to be really expensive. Um, and it doesn't really give us that much. If we look here, uh, it gave us 35% armor strength and 5% armor cost. Okay, so we'll get down into these the rest of these here in just a minute. We need to start adding components to our ship. First thing it says is we need to do a main tower, and that's this tab here. And, you know, this first one, this front tower uh, six, might be really good. Uh, we can see we have our long range accuracy is plus eight, and our base accuracy is plus five. If we look at this one, our long range accuracy is seven. And our base accuracy is 4.5. Those are the ones that I pay attention to the most so far. And this one may not be the best one. It could be this one here. And you have to look too at this number right here where the mouse actually is. That's how heavy these things are. And we do have a weight limit. And we're already about halfway there. So these things are stinking heavy. So it might be best to save some weight on the tower and get a bigger gun. Uh, that can that can shoot another battleship. So keeping that in mind, I'm going to go kind of middle of the road. We're going to do the front tower. Yeah, we'll do this one here. So we click it, and now we can kind of see where it we can place it. And we're going to place it right there. So every ship has also have to have a secondary tower. We're going to go with the smallest one here on this one. And I'm not able to place this one at all. All right, so that makes it easy. We can't use that front tower. We have to use... Actually, let's go secondary tower. Let's get the the smallest... Yeah, the smallest secondary tower. We'll push it as far back as we can. Put a main tower... Okay, let's try this one here. All right, looks like this front tower three is one that we can fit. Well, I say that and then... That was it, right? There we go. Front Tower 2. That's all we get. Alright. So. Now we need funnels. And what funnels do is help the engine breathe and be efficient. And this, this is the number we're looking at right here. So. I like to go the biggest first. And the reason why is... Uh, usually there's no real benefit to going smaller unless you're like stacking them up. If we do like dual small funnel three, and then we can do like a small funnel one right behind it, kind of a thing. So, oh, these are on the side? 
Are these on the side? That's bizarre. Okay, we'll put that all the way forward. There we go. See, our engine efficiency went up 46.6. Let's see if we can throw another one on here. We can. I want it to kind of look right, too. I don't want it to look stupid. Okay, our engine efficiency is 83.3. .3. That's going to be probably good enough. Oh, we're going to place another one on there. There we go. Now we got it up to 100. I want to maintain speed as well. It looks goofy. The small little boat. Barbettes, we don't get any yet. Main guns. This is going to be a topic of another video. <laughs> I mean, I could, I could probably talk for an hour on what guns to, are best for what. This is a battleship. I'm gonna. It's going to be like a sniper is kind of what I'm thinking. It's going to sit way off and it's going to do a lot of damage from a distance. And the way we do that is big guns. So we can put some 12 inches on here, but now pay attention to this uh, screen that popped up. I can't move my mouse and show you. So I'm going to in post, I'm going to try and zoom in here. So the thing to look at here is the reload time. It's 151.7 seconds to reload this gun. The next thing we have to look at is the ranges. Now usually we're going to be uh, in like the 5,000 meter range. So the high explosive penetration is 4.6 inches. The armor piercing is 23.2 inches of armor with an accuracy way over here at the end of 2.7 to 3.6 percent. To me, that's way too much gun. So why? Why do I say that? Let's go look at our hole. So if, if we come back here, does it say it on here? No, it doesn't. All right. So we, we come back to our, our armor here. This is a battleship. We have an armor quality of minus 25 percent right off the hop because we just have armor plate. If we switch this to compound, that's plus 35. So more armor, right? But at the cost, it's a big cost. So we can keep that at 35. We have 8.6 inches of main belt armor. That's belt armor is the armor that's right here. So our aft belt is back here. Well, actually, let's look at this here. So this, what you see in the red, is our main belt. This is our aft belt. This is our fore belt. Then our deck on this one is up here, our main deck, and our fore deck, aft deck. So this is the kind of armor that we need to penetrate on a battleship early game. So if they have a small battleship, the enemy is what I'm talking about, we don't need to penetrate, what was that? 23.2 inches of, of armor with an armor piercing round, we'll punch straight through it and cause a little bitty hole and it'll take on a little bit of flooding and whatever. So I think the best bet might be 10 inch guns. I say that because the, of the HE capabilities as well. So we can hit them with HE if we do come across something that's got a little bit bigger thickness of armor, we can switch it to armor piercing and start punching holes in it that way. So let's go with the 10 inch guns. And of course we want two barrels. We could do one barrel. It's a little bit heavier and a little bit more expensive to do two barrels, but we get two bangs for the buck. Uh, and let's see, what was the reload time on that? The reload time is 102 seconds. So, oh, I'm, I want center line guns. Said 10 inch, two barrels, boom, boom. Okay, so we got those front and back now. Now we can place guns along our perimeter here as well. Oops. <laughs> I got to put funnels on. Oh, there is an undo button. I could have easily und undo undo all that. All right. So, we have these side guns here too. And 
if we look at something like a torpedo boat, for example, I really hope I didn't just, if I did, it's fine. I'll, I'll remake it. So our torpedo boat here uh, has no armor at all. So if we use like a penetrating HE round that can penetrate eight inches of armor, it's going to punch right through, explode in the water underneath them and cause little, no, little to no damage. So, yeah, it erased everything I did. Fantastic. All right, well, let me get this built back up again the way I just had it, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, that didn't take too long. We got the name Evil. Uh, everything else should be about the same. Uh, I did actually turn on the compound armor. The Citadel, I, I forgot to mention this earlier, I did upgrade the armor on this build. Uh, to Citadel 1, and that's going to add that extra layer of armor on the Citadel itself. So we'll leave that there. So I did place these 10-inch guns down just a second ago, and we were just talking about the uh, smaller ships that we might encounter. So a destroyer's bread and butter is launching torpedoes at battleships. The, the destroyers are super small, hard to hit, and very fast. They can close the distance and launch a bunch of torpedoes. So we need to be able to, to defend our, ourselves from those smaller ships with no armor. So I'm liking the, let's do the five inch guns. As we can see, the closer they are, we kind of penetrate a little bit. They might have a little bit of armor. Um, we can go smaller, but you know we're also gonna be shooting these at maybe a, um, a heavy cruiser or a light cruiser or something like that early game. So I'm liking the five inch guns. We'll place these around the sides here. And as you can see, when I did that, it also placed them on this side. So on the top here, we can actually place another gun. Uh, I haven't seen that yet in game. So let's put something like a two inch gun on those guys. Well, so these reload times too are 6.5 seconds. Yeah, let's do that. Some parts are some parts are badly placed. So I can't play oh, it's that's like inside. Yeah. I can't actually place those. Unfortunately, that's fine. All right, and then casemate guns. These are the kind of guns that are like in little portholes on the side of some ships. I don't know if this one has any. Let's go to the two inch guns there. Oh, they're all over the superstructure. Nice. Let's kind of pepper. Well, let me put them up there. Bummer. I just removed something, I think. Oh, no, I just clicked off it. It's easy to accidentally click on things and, and do things you don't want to do. Okay, and torpedo launchers. This is a battleship. Uh, I don't think we're going to be launching torpedoes at anybody. The range for a torpedo is like a 1,000 yards or a 1,000 meters. So this is edge of the battlefield kind of a, a ship. That's where we're going to keep it. So I don't want to waste the money or the weight for torpedo launchers. So let's come back over here and now that we have our guns placed, take a look at what we're going to be packing as far as our armament goes. So max HE shells, these are our main guns. Do we want to do a standard ratio or because I'm again I'm thinking this, this whole and, the, and these guns, I mean, these guns are shooting, we're already penetrating at five, 500 meters, 14.8 inches of armor with uh, AP rounds. So I'm thinking about doing just a standard ratio, even mix, even Steven. Our secondary shells, these are our, these, these smaller uh, guys here. Let's do, um, let's max them out with HE. And these are our fuses and our, our tips. Uh, we get more with more research. Standard size shells. 
the heavier, the more penetration it's going to do, the less accurate and the longer it's going to take to load. That's it in a nutshell. There's all the stats. Uh, the light, it's a lot faster to load, a little bit better range, that sort of thing, but it, it doesn't cause as much damage or the penetration factor. So I'm thinking that we're going to go heavy just to get that extra little bit of penetration if we need it. And this goes for all of our guns. So we want to carry a lot of ammo. The worst thing we can do is run out of ammo. There are propellants. We only get one for now. And our uh, bursting charge is just black powder. That's what's inside the shell. When it hits, what's it going to do? Hydraulic turrets. That's it. Hydraulic. And enhanced. Uh, we do run the chance of causing some catastrophic damage with enhanced loading. But it's faster. We get minus 10% gun reload time with enhanced. So we're going with enhanced. Okay, so there is our ship, but it's not done yet. This takes a long time. I know, guys, I'm going through it as fast as I can. So our aft weight offset, this is, we're pretty heavy on the backside. Let's see. This is this little white line. This is our center of gravity line. And you can see it's, it's not in the middle. And we kind of want it in the middle. So we can see we're 4.1% too heavy on the back end. So we can move some things like forward. Um, can we move this one forward? We can't. Those are... Undo. Oh no. Alright. That's what I'm talking about. It's easy to mess things up like that. So, uh, let's see. So we're 4.1% too heavy on the aft. This is the bow. This is the aft. So we can adjust where our armor is to kind of balance this out a little bit. First thing we do, superstructure. That's this right here. Let us up that. I'm keeping an eye on this number right here. We're going to up that. Let's go do two inches. Well, let's do three inches of armor. Our citadel armor, this is that, that first inner layer. Let's do half inch armor. And that's That adds up quick. So to balance us out, we need to add weight forward. So let's do our four belt. And that's again this waterline area right here. So you can see as I increase the thickness, I increase that offset or decrease that offset. So let's do, you can click on these and do like 3.5. A little nose heavy yet. Aft deck, bring it up. Right there. I don't think we're going to get much better than that. And we're right at our weight, which is perfect. So now we can also adjust our guns. I know there's a lot that goes into this. Like I said, it's like drinking from a fire hose. So our turret armor, we're not going to mess with that right now. Our casemate armor, our two inch guns, uh, we can increase that armor. We're not going to mess with that either. Our 10 inch guns, we can actually increase or decrease our length. Now, if we decrease our length, we're talking about the barrel length here. If we decrease our length, then it's going to shorten our range and lessen the amount of penetration power that we have and our the, the shell's effectiveness. So we always want to lengthen our guns if we can. And we can also length, uh, increase our diameter. Our diameter gives us a little bit better ballistics. 
um, performance all the way around, right? It's like getting a bigger gun. We go up to 0.9. That's as high as it goes. I'm not going to concern ourselves with that right now. Uh, we can do that for everything here. So if we increase our 2-inch guns, though, 2%, that's fine. All right, so, and that is basically it. So this is our ship. You'll notice I wasn't paying attention much over here. Uh, I was more focused here and over here. Um, we can weights and cost. So this is a very expensive, this is $34 million ship right here. We do want to keep it uh, operational and in, in good working order. Here we have our complement. We, we can have 537 crew. They're all cadets. We don't have any training at all. Uh, so we don't get any skills, no buffs to that at all because they're basically teenagers. Uh, and we don't, minimal controls. Like there's no buff here at all. Uh, we already went over that. Weights and costs. So this is our basic stats overview of our boat. Excuse me, our ship. This is the battleship Evil. And that's what it costs. It's going to take 13 months to build it. And that's, that's, that's monthly maintenance. This is a very important number as well. It's 1.3, almost $1.4 million. Top speed is almost 17 knots. We'll never get that. And uh, yeah, our armament. So this is our first ship. We'll go ahead and save that design. And then we can create another ship so and that's exactly what we'll do this one i'm gonna go through really really fast i'm gonna do a i'm gonna do an armored cruiser and i'm just gonna leave the names generic for now Okay, so we had to go with a little bit different uh, idea. I had to do a uh, light, light cruiser. As you can see here, it's not armored very well at all. We got 5-inch. Well, let's take a look at our plan here. Uh, let's overview. There we go. So it's the Duluth. It's the light cruiser design. It's going to cost us $7 million. It's going to take us 9 months to get it. It's a fraction of that battleship. Top speed is 18.5 knots. We can probably actually increase that just a little bit. Oop, not too much. I think the for the whole design, light cruiser was 20.5 knots, so we're still good. I'm going to drop that down. That engine efficiency I want to keep. Like right around 100. We get in the bad weather and I still need to book it. We need to book it. There we go. All right. So, boy, just everything wants to highlight. 
So same crew, we just all cadets. Uh, we have seven five-inch guns. Uh, we have four three-inch guns, and we have three racks of underwater torpedo tubes that are stationed underneath the water. So the idea for this one is kind of like a destroyer, but without much armor. Like the armor in this thing is not that thick, which makes it very efficient. And some guns have poor sector of fire. I can't figure out which guns that is. Like, we got some casemate guns. Maybe that one. I see it. That's a torpedo launcher. Like, they all got pretty decent sectors of fire. And usually they highlight it. So, with that first one, I was trying to do the Armor Cruiser 1. And I could not get the engine efficiency like above 30%. Uh, and there's just not very much space to put in a good uh, funnel set. Um, that type of thing. So I think this is going to be a good start. So let's go ahead and save that design. And we'll... Let's see. Refit. Copy. Delete. We'll exit. So that is the time-consuming portion of this game so far. And I'll spend a lot of time building ships, uh, kind of off screen, but I want to make them, I can have the AI do it. I can have the AI absolutely create the, the ships for us, but we won't get the best design. And I want to make sure that we have the best design that I am going to be playing with. So for that reason, that's what we're going to be doing. All right. So our fleet, there it is. <laughs> uh, we can add crew to it, but we don't have any ships yet. They're still being built. So it's going to take... Uh, does it say on here? They're going to take a while to, to build. I think this one this one was like nine months or something like that. There, I don't remember. Oh, build time. There it is. Build time, 13 months. This one was 10 months. So they're going to take some time to, to build. So submarines. We can also build, apparently, submarines. I have not seen that yet. So here we are in the world. We have nothing. We have naval prestige as one. Uh, and we can see our log here of what other people are doing. That's basically it. So once we actually have some ships to command, uh, we can continue on. So let's go ahead and start for January 1890. I think if we do uh, a campaign, a uh, start campaign, it's going to go to the next year. It'll be 1891, I think. Start campaign. You have not built any ships. Are you sure you want to start the campaign without any ships? Pretty sure. Make sure that... Yeah, we haven't built any ships yet, but I can't... Can I just build it? Oh. Build. There we go. Okay. Oh. Build ship. I don't know what these numbers mean. Oh. Oh. That's how many ships you want to build. Oh. Yeah, we'll do like three light clu cruisers. Build. There we go. So we have to keep a tab on our finances here as well because we have 69 million to, to spend but that just cost well a couple million so i can build a bunch of ships it <laughs> sounds like uh, uh apparently we are pretty wealthy so um, maybe i'll build a bunch more ships off screen and i'll show you what i have uh as far as our ship designs and everything uh, at the be beginning of each episode, maybe. We'll see how that goes. So, fleet, there we go. We have three light cruisers and one battleship being built right now. That's right. Let's go back to our world. Start campaign. There we go. And I guess next turn. All right, here we go. At a press conference, a journalist asked you, asked if you consider Chinese Empire as a possible enemy for the future. What is your answer? I don't know. 
I don't remember. <laughs> there are politics, and I can't go over there. The Suez Canal is accessible for all ships during peacetime, but can block the passage for all enemies of the Ottoman Empire and its allies during war. New Sea Passage. The Bosporus Strait is accessible for all ships during peacetime, but can block the passage for all enemies of the Ottoman Empire and its allies during the war. Another one. Dana Strait. Okay. Boy, there's a lot of uh, straits that are being that can potentially be blocked to enemies. All right, alliance and trade agreement. Portugal has signed a, a special alliance and trade agreement with the Italian Empire after a long period of good relations with each other. Effects for the Italian Empire is an enhanced economy. Uh, Portugal's ports can be used as a supply center. Can sell warships to Portugal. Can utilize ships to, of Portugal during war. That's great for the Italians. Close. All right. And I believe it is our turn. Here's our message that we got. Let's check China. Is that China? That's Spanish. China is this one here. We're neutral with them. So that's fine. But we are going to be going to war, it looks like, with Spain. So let's check out Spain. They have no battleships, but they do have some heavy cruisers, some light cruisers, a bunch of light cruisers, and a bunch of uh, uh, torpedo boats. So it might be a good idea to bolster our battleships that take out these guys and our heavy cruisers that take out these guys. Uh, and our light cruisers will make short work of those uh, torpedo boats. So, let's check our finances. Everything looking good so far. Perfect. Research. Everything is still about the same. Ship design. Our fleet. So, here they have been built. Perfect. And, of course, no submarines yet. Okay, so, our world. And I'm not exactly sure where my ships are at exactly is that one of them that is a ship right yeah that's the british empire so looking around where is a good way of seeing where my ships are at fleet oh in being set crew okay view I didn't want that. <laughs> okay, so our ships are in the eastern North America, the Gulf of Mexico, and eastern North America. So let's go back to here. We got ships somewhere in here. The Spanish Empire's ship. I want to take my ship out to sea. I'm not sure, but let's do this. Let's do uh, ship design. Let's build a couple more battleships. Let's build like five of them. There we go, build. There was six of them. Ship design. Build. There we go. Now we will uh, have some some ships, some actual ships to maybe put up against the Spanish if we go to war with them. I'm sure somebody is watching this who is familiar with this game is like, dude, all you got to do is... X, Y, and Z. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, 
well, actually, let's see here. Fleet. Okay, so Philadelphia, Tampa, Miami, and Philadelphia. Okay, so let's find Philadelphia. We're going to find the battleship Evil. It's up here in Philly. There we go. Move ships. Right click mouse button to move ships. All ships. Move. There we go. So we actually have to click on the port that they're in. Fantastic. I think we had one here as well. Yeah, let's move ships. And we'll just kind of come down here. Do, 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 do. In Miami. There we go. Was that all of them? Okay, we're all at sea. Yes. Perfect. Politics. Still at negative 75. We could try to improve re relations, or we can try to uh, increase the tension. Who are we, like, really happy with? Great Britain, we're at 25. I don't know, I don't think that's like really super happy. But we can take a look here. We're going to try and improve relations for 25. Yes. As far as I know, that didn't do anything. All right. Next turn. It might take a turn. New technology and naval communications, flag communication. Yay. No, negative 95 communications range. Perfect. Chile signed a uh, alliance with the British Empire. No tension. The recent provocations of Chief Admiral Yes <laughs> of the Spanish Empire were simply ignored by the United States. <laughs> I didn't... What? You did what? Okay. Your efforts to improve relationship with the British Empire Empire have failed. Negative two naval prestige. Oh, that sucks. Military conflict. People of Arabia take arms and try to gain control of this place that is currently occupied by the Ottoman Empire. Ooh, so it sounds like Arabia in the, is at war with the Ottoman Empire, maybe? Army loses special army operations. Interesting. All right. So here we are again. Uh, fleet. All right. So we don't have an. Oh, I can select the port that they're in. Oh, nice. We'll put these battleships in and around Miami. So there we have it. They will be built. Let's go back to our world. Let's check. Uh, let's see. I want to bring this guy. Move. There we go. Now he's moving. We got these guys just kind of sitting off the coast of Cuba here. And let's check our politics. Well, everything's about the same still. Finances. Ooh, we're down by about half. So we can do the math, figure out if we're losing a bunch of money, which we are. <laughs> So our fleet maintenance isn't horrible, but that is per month, and per month we are only getting 39, well, almost 40, 40 million. So we do have to keep an, an eye on that. Hopefully soon we'll get a better uh, shipyard that'll allow us to build 
those bigger ships. Well, I think that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, join me for the next episode when we try to get into a scrapping fight with uh, Spain down here around Cuba. I'm probably going to come in and build a couple more ships uh, designs. And yeah, so thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please remember to hit that thumbs up button. Like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And we will see you on the next one. Bye for now.